A motions hearing on Tuesday, November 9th in the Barry Morphew case was only supposed to take two hours long, except it took four hours thanks to the defense. And it didn't even scratch the surface as to what was supposed to occur in that hearing. Now, the defense feels that Barry's case should be thrown out, and they are throwing out some pretty serious accusations against the prosecution and others involved in the case. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty of the case, Barry's daughters were by his side on the day of that hearing, along with, of course, his defense team. So now to the hearing. The defense is accusing the prosecution of keeping key evidence from them, and also they're saying that there's other potential suspects in this case that they haven't been on the up and up about. And they're talking about the DNA that was found in Suzanne's vehicle on the glove box that Agent Cahill talked about in the preliminary hearing. And they said that the CBI knew more about the DNA that they let on, and that they didn't follow up on any leads and or purposely aren't divulging the evidence to the court or the defense. So the defense is saying that Agent Cahill with CBI lied about his knowledge of the DNA evidence in the case. But Agent Cahill sticks to his testimony. Now, there was a woman named Caitlin Rogers with CBI. She took the stand and she's a DNA analyst for the Bureau. She talked about DNA and she said that she tested DNA found in Suzanne's car and listed it as foreign and that she believed the car to be connected to the incident and left from the perpetrator of the crime. Now, another agent was talking about searching profiles in the CODIS database and how DNA casework works and what the difference is between it all. I didn't get the total nitty gritty because I'm trying to combine all the information from tweets and news and honestly, it's a hot mess. It's an entirely hot mess. So this agent talked about conversations that she had with several people from the Chafee County Sheriff's Office, the DA office and the FBI about what had been tested and what's not, what has not been tested in the case. And she said that she's going through things they have tested, including Suzanne's car, the Morphe residence, and also a mug that was left on the counter at the Morphe residence. She also talked about how they got prior owners from that home to submit DNA to be ruled out in the case as well. And this agent was talking about the one DNA that was partially matched and it was the match to a sex offender in Arizona. And the agent said that there were convicted offender profiles that were tested against the DNA, but did not come back with a match. I talked about this in previous videos about a partial match is not an exact match. So this is gonna be interesting when they bring an expert in and they start talking about it because now um, then it's going to really make things a lot more understandable as to what this is really about. It could be a cousin. So apparently this agent had a conversation on November 1st and it explained which items are being searched in CODIS and went through the timeline as well and when things were released. The one thing that it did reveal though, the agent said when they were compiling information for the defense attorneys, that it was revealed that a letter for a match notification that usually comes from CBI was not handed out. And prosecutors chimed in, they said that there was a software glitch with this. More on that in a minute. So the defense is also saying, hey, there's conversations with law enforcement that haven't been reported to the defense. We wanna know what it is. We want this and that and the other thing. They're also talking about emails as well that they haven't received, that they should receive. And there was an issue because the defense put a court order to gather these emails, but there is a 90 day turnaround or after 90 days, these emails get deleted. So there's a kerfuffle on that as well. And there's going to be more motions dealt with. And I'll talk about that also in a minute. Now, the defense feels that Barry's bond could have been set at a lower amount because of this hidden evidence that um, hasn't been produced and that the prosecution's not being straightforward and they're saying that Barry's case may not even have gone to trial had this stuff come out and if the prosecution was up front. Now the prosecution assures the court that they hid nothing throughout this process and the judge said that the prosecution didn't really present much evidence during the preliminary hearing to show that what the DNA match meant, 
which he says helped him decide that there wasn't enough evidence to continue to keep Barry Morphew without Bond. So this kind of sucks. It's too bad that they wouldn't have gone more in depth about partial matching and all that and eliminated this suspect, but maybe time was a factor, I don't know. We'll find out soon enough, I guess. Now this is where it gets really interesting and the comment that was made in court. This is one of my favorite comments actually from the defense. Ultimately, the defense feels like there's a big black hole in the case. And in fact, I'll read you the line that they said. The defense says, there's a black hole in this case when it comes to any evidence pointing away from Barry Morphew killing his wife, Suzanne. Now, in my opinion, there certainly is a big black hole. And there's a big black hole, in my opinion, because it's empty and will turn up empty when looking away from Barry Morphew, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Or maybe perhaps we need to look at the squirrel or turkey or elk or mountain lion. Those were all involved that weekend. So ultimately, the judge says they want the defense to file another motion and list as to what evidence and specific evidence they want access to, and that will be addressed in the next hearing in December. He is ordering both sides to also meet and clarify what is needed so that there isn't any time wasted. Now, we're seeing some interesting things here. A lot of the defense taking up a lot of the time, and I get that they need to speak. I get the prosecution needs to speak, but we even saw this in the preliminary, which was kind of interesting that they took up so much time and the judge keeps going like, we are on the clock. We need to get this moving along. And so he's a little bit confused here too as to why this is being brought up and, and why are we talking about this now, this kind of thing. But it was noted that Judge Murphy actually didn't find any potential evidence that proved that the prosecution was withholding anything. Now in the hearing, they also talked about discovery and it's being redone. There's more than one terabyte of info and the prosecution is getting help from another district. But the defense is stating that there are eight discovery items that have not been produced and stating that it's a pattern of the prosecution and they're accusing them of fraud. And the prosecution fought back and said, we have never perpetuated fraud upon this court. Now there's eight items that they were talking about and some of them include emails and texts, all statements from experts, the SmartForce database that they're working to communicate on, Suzanne's laptop, the Ritter's communication memo, um, and a camera that produces Faro scans. And speaking of camera, I'm not sure if this is the same camera they're talking about. Again, hot mess to follow this. But there was a camera that the defense is asking to prove or show, I should say, where the location is, where the Morphew residence is. So this is very interesting to me uh, that they want to talk about this and where it's at. Now remember, Barry lives right near his old home and that's the place he wants to be. And he's not um, tracked all day. He's supposed to go once a day into town and then come back out and then, you know, be untraceable. Still bothers me about that. The next court date is December 14th and they're planning for another four hours is my understanding. So it's a continuation from this one that was supposed to just take two hours and you know, be, be quick and done. Other motion hearings have also been set for January 24th, the 25th, and February 1st. And Barry's trial is happening in May of 2022 two years after Suzanne's disappearance and she still has not been found. Now also, there was a huge data dump done this week as well. And there's, I think, 400 pages to go through, three or 400 pages, uh, could be more. So I'll be combing through that. Let me know your thoughts about this. Do you think Barry's gonna get off? And what do you think about his lawyer's strategy or tactics? Let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.